What's going on? What's going on, good people? What's going on, everybody? How is everybody doing this evening? We are now in the triple digits, so episode 101. Indeed, man. Indeed. Before we go on, I just want to say, I don't know if you heard him, bro, but I called your ass radio. But um, <coughs> like every episode, <laughs> man, get your headphones on if you're at work. Get your accessories right, man. Put the kitties to bed because you might just hit right. some of my language. Let's get it, man. Let's go. Got that right. Roll the Perfect. 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 Before we kick things off, let's get this accessory check in going. So while you were telling us what you got, I'm going to light up. So by all means, go for it. Well, for the drink, vodka cranberry, man. Nothing major tonight. Mm-hmm. Didn't feel like too hot to be trying to find new discoveries of alcoholic beverages out here in the sip. It's been over 100 degrees all fucking week. Um, and for this guy right here, it's the one of the newest ones that came in the BL Luxuries pack. It's the uh, oh, yeah. Yoha de Nicaragua. Uh, the and the art that shit. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever exactly. that A word says at the bottom. But I'm celebrating tonight, so I wanted the strongest cigar I might have. It says full body, so hopefully it is full body. It's pretty damn good so far, man. I must say. Yeah, that one should be pretty good. I haven't had that one yet, but it should be good. Yeah, pretty damn good, man. But how about you? What you got going on? Um, so as you said, it's pretty damn hot. It here. It is also hot here. Can't even talk it's so damn hot. So just like you, same idea. Great minds think alike, I guess. I was gonna go get something else, but I was like, it's too hot. I am not drinking whiskey neat right now. <laughs> and there's some ice in the double wall cup, and I got more ice to come. So I didn't want to waste any alcohol or trying any new things with uh, that. So I just got the good old infinity bottle. So I say all that to I ain't got shit new, basically. Right. And right. then on the cigar, I got um, the BL Luxuries. I think this is not last with the one before. Um, the Stolen Throne. Mm, yeah, 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 yeah. So, so far, so good. So we'll see. It's a little, little soft box press. We'll see how it's going. I'm about to pull up now, and we we'll get this thing started. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it's that time. It's that time. It's that time for the what's best in life or the wibble, man, where we share mm-hmm. our positivity. Mm-hmm. Oof, I can't talk either. It's fuck out of here, too. Yeah, it's real hot <laughs> right now. Well, we share our positivity in this ever, ever negative world we in, man. If y'all been watching the news, it's just getting worse and worse by the fucking day. I'm going to stop saying negative shit in this world because it's always going to be negative. But fuck all that. Mm-hmm. We're on the positive. So, brother, what's best in life? Oh, shit. Um, the cigar. Um, that's it. I feel you. Um, no, I mean, it's been a week. Um, those happen sometimes. Um, otherwise, family's good. Family's healthy. Um, got Lamar signed up for uh, daycare, so that's a good thing. Um, MF and research is chugging along, trying to make our way to 250. So that's fun. That's exciting. Um, got actually have two videos shot. Just got to finish editing them up. So trying to get ahead on some stuff. Nice. Um, yeah, I don't know if you're gonna talk about it in your wibble. We starting to get FLP like we said on the podcast areas. So we have some technical difficulties, and right now it's on Spotify. It'll be on um, YouTube proper, the podcast section, by the time this airs for 100 and probably 101. But we come in, we're going to figure out Google and Apple and all other podcast spots. But yeah, so we're we doing good. Um, otherwise, man, that's it. Really, it's my first cigar of the week because it's so damn hot. No, maybe I had one earlier in the week. I think I had one earlier in the week. Right. So, yeah, otherwise, that's it, man. So what's best in life? Well, like you said, man, we are now on Spotify. If you guys are wondering what it looks like, man, y'all go to Spotify and y'all find that one. Don't get it confused with the foul language when you're talking about birds and shit. Shout out to him, yeah, too. I'm pretty sure it's pretty, yeah, pretty some pretty good content he has. Yeah. Um, <laughs> let me see. That little thumbnail was glorious, man. Oh, yeah, yeah. Pretty good yeah. shit. Hell, yeah. Um. School started back, you know, got me a junior, seventh grader, and a first grader going through the wow. thing, you know. Um, first school, first day of school, pictures and all that good shit. So that's done and over with. Um, survived another 
drill or battle assembly for my reserve and national guard folks you know what i'm talking about not too shabby not too shabby mama called both of us and shared some real mm-hmm. good news so that's just definitely yeah, she did. Best of life, man that was real good that shit was funny we too, still man. snitching we still and, snitching <laughs> and we did I i'm pretty sure we haven't mentioned it but congratulations to our sister who's been on the show a couple fucking times yeah and, y'all seen her and her husband nard y'all look up mlb nard on youtube man um, they're having a baby, man. They got a baby coming. Yeah, yeah. Got a Congratulations to them. Coming. Um, if yeah. you guys watch this episode, sorry, I'm not gonna be able to be there, but in there in spirit and all that good stuff, man. Same um, here. Maybe we'll try to get in on like a Facetime or Zoom. Or yeah, we'll, we'll do but, something. Yeah. Like that, man. yeah. Um, Shit, what else is going on, man? Same here, man. It's just been hot as hell, man. We, they, my air conditioner still fucking working my car in the house. So, I mean, that's a blessing right there. That's, that's that blessing. is <laughs> what's best in life around this bitch, man. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, Keontae started band rehearsal last week, like before school started. Mm-hmm. They already kicked it off and they're doing uh, Star Spangled Banner, some other shit, and something else. Mm-hmm. But, um, he sounded pretty fucking good, man. I was. Thoroughly impressed with my son's effort and his uh, ability to play the sax. Oh, so, look at him getting that saxophone in. Yeah, hell yeah, man. Um, we started watching The Witcher. The Witcher is fucking good, bro. Like, oh, it is. That's the best fucking season they've had. Damn, of course, they're gonna have the best season when right old dude leaving. That's, <laughs> That's what shit. I said. We were going back and forth for who should play him, bro. So maybe mm-hmm. we should do that on air one day before. The new season come yeah. out. I know who's going to what play it, him. I don't yeah, right. I don't really agree with who's playing. I mean, I say just say sorry and bring him back, man. He ain't Superman no more. So yeah, yeah, they might as well, man. Just cut him another check or something, man. Do something. Um, Five Language is doing what it does. Men in the War is doing what it does. Mm-hmm. MF and Research is really doing what it does. Shout out to you, bro. You killing right, me man. right now, man. Um, and that's really all I got. I can't really think of nothing else right now. But I mean. I'm breathing. We heal. That's what's best in life. All right, everybody. We are back. We are back sharing the screen again. This isn't is it racist this time, but this was another topic that I found in my internet perusals, and I thought it'd be interesting to talk about. So listen to this video, and then we'll be back after it's done. When I have boys, even when I go into the JDC, when I have boys looking at me telling me, I can make five, six hundred, seven hundred dollars a day or more in three hours. Stealing your gun out your car, robbing you get real quick. And then I'm at home chilling. And I'm on the Xbox. I'm on the PS5 for the rest of the day chilling while you are here busting your butt every day to work. I can make this in a few hours. Mm. What do you tell that kid? My mama's struggling. We're hungry. But I can go out here in three hours, get the money, feed my mama, and our life's not going to be off. And you telling me to go to school, work hard. You're a college graduate. You're a teacher. And you're struggling. I had boys tell me I already lived 25 years and kick it and have everything I want. They struggle for 70. Wow. What do you tell that kid? I don't know. My mama can't afford to put Jordans on my feet. Mm-hmm. But I can go out here and make one hit, and I can buy Jordans for all my siblings. And they don't care if they lose their life or anything. No, they're not afraid. And that's why I'm afraid, because they really aren't afraid. All right, so y'all saw the video. Y'all heard the point that was made. Um, check out the podcast. This is a pretty good podcast. Stronger than my father. I've listened to a few episodes here and there so definitely check it out but um so you heard it what do you think man what are your thoughts first shout out the was it stronger than my father podcast mm-hmm. shout, shout out to you bro i'm gonna I'll follow you as soon as we finish recording this right here um but <clears throat> it's interesting because i've had these conversations with kev andre man because it's like you know i'm not getting the money fast enough i need a car i need mm-hmm. to do this i need to do that i need to do this and yeah you do get these these young kids that are you know watching their mama struggle and you mm-hmm. know what i'm saying as, as shit gets fucking higher money is not really fucking increasing so they feel like this is the i, I can go out here and make the six seven hundred dollars in a couple of hours hitting a lick real quick versus work, busting my ass for a month and getting six seven hundred dollars maybe you know it's kind of mm-hmm. it's, it's it's a hard thing Rather, I can't just sit up there and condemn what these kids are doing because I can't. Right. You don't know anybody's situation. And a lot of times the system was created for our people to struggle in certain situations. Well, it used to be. I'm not going to say it's really that case anymore. 
Um, but on the other side, you do got to weigh your, your risk with your reward. Um, Paul, you young ones that's listening right now. You know, you got to weigh your, the risk with your reward. Yeah, you can go mm-hmm. hit the split uh, six, seven, eight hundred dollars real quick. But then again, you get jammed up about six, seven hundred dollars and you losing about shit. Armed robbery is like mandatory 10 years, bro. You losing like mm-hmm. 10 years of your fucking life in a fucking cell with some hard legs, no women, no nothing, no freedom. Like, mm-hmm. it, it's kind of like, do I want this money fast to have everything what I've always wanted? Or do I want to and end up in prison or dead early and can't really enjoy the few fruits of my fucking labor? Or you could bust your fucking ass with your nine to five and come up with other side hustles that are legitimate on top of that nine to five. So you're not struggling. A lot of people that, that struggle right now, in my opinion, they they honestly got to get that dog in them. You know what I'm saying? They got to get that hustle mm-hmm. in them because there's so many fucking ways to get out here and fucking make some fucking money. I mean, even mm-hmm. if you set the fucking waters off of I-85 or some shit like that, there's some way, so many ways to fucking um, make legitimate money but they see how it's glorified on social media and um i will blame music but music's kind of been like this already it's just gotten real real mm-hmm. stupid now. but um you know it's glorified now so they won't they, they want to ride in this car they want to ride in that car um i kev andre for example again i said hey man you can get this car right here for like 1200 i mean it's a little bucket i mean you know first car Nah, dad, mm-hmm. I want to ride and you know, I want to get something fresh off the lot and ride, 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 ride. And you know, I want to get this and I want a G Wagon one day and I want to do this and scamming. And I, I, I hear all of this shit all the fucking time, man. Um, and some of these parents think that shit cool too to letting their kids do it. We got uh, mm-hmm. we got people that's in our circle right now. I, I they, they're 12 year old smoking a goddamn black and mild. On fucking social media, throwing up gang signs and all this other fucking shit, cause they, they mm-hmm. let them glorify the shit, man. But there's nothing wrong with a nine to five, cause me as a man, personally, I feel like working at nine to five gives me purpose. Getting up, busting my ass during the fucking day, coming home after a long day, knowing that number one, I ain't got to look over my fucking shoulder, I ain't got to keep looking at the window every time a fucking car pass, mm-hmm. and I can just sit and enjoy my life, enjoy my family, enjoy my drink, and just fucking relax, man. Yeah. I may not have all the fucking money in the world, but there's ways to get there. You know what I'm saying? There, there's there's steps to fucking take. And when you get it fast, you burn it fast. Especially mm-hmm. if you hit a lick. You get six, seven hundred dollars in two or three hours. If you smart, you getting rid of that six, seven hundred dollars in the next couple hours after you motherfucking get the shit because it's hot. You ain't supposed to keep that shit. So I've heard. Um, but that's really um that, that, that's really it, really, man. My my young brothers and sisters out there. Um, no, you don't have to do a nine to five. You got you see these videos with these eleven year olds that got culinary businesses and um, CEOs of uh, coding, or whatever the fuck. You know, there, there's kids out there that's really getting it in and not working a regular nine to five, and at the same time not doing crime either. Man, it's it's out here. You just got to find your passion. You got to find your talent, man. Because these kids, especially the generation of uh, my kids, they fucking smart as shit. Well, they they smart as a motherfucker, man. Like, it just blows my fucking mind what they can do on YouTube and TikTok and um, shit, Facebook and streaming video games and adding now editing. They, I mean, it's just fucking amazing how smart mm-hmm. these kids are to resort to some shit like that. And for the for the OGs that's around, like the OGs ain't even real OGs no more because the OGs back in the day when we was fucking coming up, it was nah, you don't want to do that. Take your ass to school somewhere, right? Mm-hmm. Now, mm-hmm. Oh, so you want to get down? You got to do this. You got to do this. You got to flip this. I'm gonna show you how to scam. That that's that's what the OGs are teaching these kids now, man. Not like how we grew up. And um, oh yeah, yeah, man. That's that's really really all I got for the moment, man. I'm curious to hear what you got to say. This is tricky for me, man, because you said a couple points that I, if I remember, mom, I'm gonna try to um, expound on those from my perspective. So the first thing you said is risk versus reward. Mm-hmm. When you're young. You, you think you're invincible. True. So your risk tolerance is very high. And that and then that level of arrogance that you can't be told nothing. And to the point that she made was they're saying that I'd rather live good till I'm 25, which means depending on they My bad. Slip. All right, we can try this again. So when they're 25, um, you know... So let's say they start, you know, hustling at six at sixteen. 
I guess I, I can live good for nine years and, you know, had a best life ever for nine years. And then for the rest or, or conversely work hard for the next 55, 60 years. And they're like, hey, I'd rather have this good nine versus this rough 60. And that's from the ignorance of youth, unfortunately. And, you know, and if that's your perspective, I mean, some people like to live fast, die young, and it's kind of a hard thing to counteract. And I see where they're coming from. You know, their mom is struggling, their daddy's struggling, their friend's mom is struggling, the friend's daddy's struggling, they're struggling. And they're like, yo, you go to work every day, you got these bills, you got these taxes, you got this, you got that, the lights do, shit breaking, and I can go get this lick. And do they even say that anymore? Our age did. So I'm gonna say I'm 40, so <laughs> we'll keep it like it is. <laughs> 41 now, damn it. Um, <laughs> so you you're right. So you can, you know, participate in these unsavory activities and, and make a little extra bread real fast. And you know, that that fast money is a is a it's a dopamine too. So I mean that that's kind of a challenge to tell somebody, hey. Stop doing what feels good right now. I mean, it's like anything, really. You know, it's going to sound great at the time in the beginning. But then, like you said, when you get jammed up, it ain't that good. And you were saying that, you know, they need to get that dog in them and get that hustle in them. I don't necessarily agree with that. I think that dog in them and that hustle in them is already there. Because, you know, to do that shit, to find that car, to get in that car, to get that shit, to sell that shit, to make that money, there's hustle. But what you have to do is the OGs have to figure out how to get them to channel that hustle. And like you were saying, if they ain't got them OGs, OGs like we had when we were growing up to say, hey, man, you you know, you smart or you good at football or you good in sports or whatever, so, you know, don't mess that shit up. If they don't have that, I mean, it's kind of hard. And, you know, to have that interaction. And a lot of times, depending on where you are, you don't get the opportunity unless you aggressively seek it out to kind of pour into those young people, man. So that's the hard part. And like she was saying in the video, she was saying in juvenile detention centers is when she's talking to these young men. Mm -hmm. And that's, you know, they're, they're in there, like, feeling the repercussions of their actions. Like, fine. I mean, and it's kind of hard to deal with somebody who doesn't have, who doesn't see, like, oh, this is wrong. But, I mean, it's so unfortunate when it's like, there's so many ways out here. But you don't see it, and that's the that's the challenge, and that, I think that's where you know the system is designed to build workers, and you either going to become a worker on a nine to five, or you're going to be a worker making pennies on a dollar, assembling chairs, or you're going to be in a box. I mean, and those are those kind of become your options, and it, it takes a lot of vision to see that, and a lot of these kids at 15, 16, 17 just don't see it and they don't have those people trying to show it to them and they haven't seen examples close to them that are tangible that are like yo what are they doing they shit legal they ain't struggling i mean and then the other problem is you see people that are on the internet that'll be like you know um, i was i think i don't know if i sent it to you but um it seemed like they just legit they doing legit business but they just hustling and you find out they scamming too on the white collar side and um, I, if I if I I find it, it's like a five hundred million dollar scam. Yes, yeah, so that shit, that story was wild. It's like about an hour and a half story to follow. But yeah, I mean, it, it's so much out there. You know, and I mean, of all walks of life, they're like, I can get this money fast and not have to struggle. Yeah. And you know, you have to realize that if the risk and not having, like you said, to look over your shoulder, not have to worry about you know where you lay your head you know, all that stuff. But then the other side of that, when you're working at 9 to 5, you have to worry about that other brother or whoever that ain't trying to do that and trying to get you, so you got to protect your shit. So, I mean, it's kind of one of them things. It's like, you, you all, in some respects, you're damned if you do damn if you don't. Yeah. But at the same time, I mean, just there's ways out there, man. And I think what happens is a lot of times we don't get shown the opportunities and things that are out there. Like, I mean, I'll give you an example, like the military, you know what I mean? Like growing up, it was either go to college on a sports scholarship or something or go in the military. Those were yeah. kind of like the options that were, were were shown to us. Didn't know that there was more options out there until way, way later. I mean, I found out I could, like when I got my scholarship to go to college, it was like, what sport do you play? 
like not a damn one. And you know, people will look at me like, "What's wrong with you? What did you do?" <laughs> and and so it's you don't get to see that those options are out there. I mean, I used to back in the day, like like, "Hey, this is what you need to do: do this, do that, do this, do that." And you know, since I've had kids, I haven't had that opportunity to do that as much as I used to. And, um, and then secondly, the other thing is like, like I was going back with the military, you think they teach you like going to military after school. I mean, after high school, I mean, and even in recruiters, they like pumping you in, trying to get you in the military, get you in the military. I remember when I had that recruiter, we've talked about it before. They were like, hey, man, you, you hungry? Here's some lunch. You need to ride to work. Here you go. And then you find out that you're going to school. They're like, we ain't got nothing to do with you no more. Not telling you that you can go in, you can go in as an officer afterwards. The Army can pay for your education. You can retire from the Army and get a civilian job and may be doing really good if you go that route. I mean, there's other avenues than just go straight in right after, you know, 17, 18, going straight into the military. But you don't get shown that until, mm-hmm. and you don't hear about it until way later. And then, you know, the craziest thing in the world that I see is like, them generals that end up getting jobs at like defense contractors and stuff that you know got a pretty substantial pension as a general and then on a board somewhere. I mean still making money. Big money. And a lot safer than you know trying to be on these streets. But it takes time and some people don't want to wait that long. And that's the thing too. That patience. Patience is a hard thing to have, man. And it that, is. That's one of those things that's I'm still learning. Not it. cultivated. We all are, man. Instant gratification is a powerful drug. I mean, social media is designed on it. So, yeah. I mean, it's it's powerful, man. So, I mean, that's really all I got, man. It's just do the best we can, man. Hope to show them it's a better way. Realizing that I understand where they're coming from. I get it. It makes sense. But you know, it, think about you know you may be provided now, but when you get jammed up. You know, we know from experience the the toll of when somebody gets jammed up, what that takes to try to help that person. So yeah. just think about more than yourself if you can. Yeah. And if you're yeah. doing it, don't do it forever. Yeah. I mean and don't be greedy. Yeah. If you're doing it, like like you said, don't do it forever. Don't be greedy. Do it just enough so you can stack some bread to flip that shit into something legit. Yeah. So you can keep it more money. Keep that fucking hustle in you. Like I said, keep that dog in you. Um, the last thing I got really is I'm glad I had the opportunity to actually mentor some of these um these young mm-hmm. brothers, man, some of the young sisters too. When I was doing a youth challenge academy, man, for uh that mm-hmm. one class I did a four four, I went back active or whatever. Um, and it, it was a good experience because you know a lot of them kids wanted more, but they didn't know how to reach it. Mm-hmm. It was like you know this is all I know, this is what I grew up around. Mm-hmm. This. You know, I'm a blood, my mama's a blood, her dad is a blood, everybody's a blood type of, mm-hmm. you know, type of environment where it's like living like this and hustling like we hustling and doing what we got to do is it's hereditary. This is this is what we do. It's, it's mm-hmm. that nature versus nurture thing. And they, they were nurtured, yeah. you know, do what they do. And like I said, I'm not knocking it. I'm not knocking it. I haven't done. Never mind. But um, <laughs> right. I'm not knocking it at all, but you know, try try some way to evolve from that. Don't be selling nickels and dimes and you 40 and you still selling fucking nickels right. and dimes, bro. Like, you know what I'm saying? Uh, I'm not saying go from nickels and dimes to quota keys and nothing like that, man. <laughs> but you know, right. open up a shop or a restaurant or something, man. Mm-hmm. Something, man. Um and um for people that's our age, you know, the 80s babies, 90s babies, man, don't don't just let these little brothers and sisters just fall to the wayside, man. I mean, they ain't going to listen, they ain't going to listen, but at least impart mm-hmm. some kind of fucking wisdom into these youngins, man. Because even when you I can was- You can help one. Yeah. You can help one. Even as a correct, when I was a correction officer, man, we had like, there was two inmates in there. They couldn't have been no more than about 18, 19. Mm-hmm. About 18, 19. They served in like 20 years, bro. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I would talk yeah. to these hard-headed ass motherfuckers, mm-hmm. and one of them would listen, one of them wouldn't. Mm-hmm. The other one went before I got left. He like got his GD and all this other stuff, and you know he's working in a little spot in the prison, learning the actual trade while he's in there. He's actually trying to rehabilitate himself. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it just takes one word, and long like you said, as long as you can reach one person, man. And, mm-hmm. that, and I will say, kind of a powerful moment that I, I don't know what he's doing with himself now, but if you remember, when we were in Atlanta and we went to that restaurant, and you ran into one of the people that were in there when you were there. 
Yeah. And they came up to you and said, Hey, I'm doing good now. I'm working. And mm -hmm. you know, that, that, that shows that you had an impact on his life in some way. And, and so that was yeah, cool. Good dude, but again, good dude. yeah. So uh, let us know what you guys think. Let us know what you've experienced. Give us some ideas. Open for that too. Oh yeah. For them struggling parents out there that got a kid that's, you know, dealing with this type of thing, man. Um, you know, put some in the comments too here if you want us to. I, shit, we'll talk to them. Mm -hmm. Real shit, like you best for real. Yeah, yeah that's real. Because a lot of them just don't have that male role model to say, "Hey, man, you fucking up." There's other ways. Yeah, and you fucking up. It might not be as fast as you want it, but yeah. All right, man. How are those accessories going? Is the cigar as strong as you hoped? The cigar is good, man. I don't think it's pairing right though. I don't think oh, it's pairing with the yeah. vodka. Dude. It's it's a mm -hmm. it's a, not a great taste with the two in my palate. Mm -hmm. It's not really mm -hmm. a good mix. I mean, my vodka separate, yeah. Yeah. the cigar separate, yeah, but mixed together, it's not really that great. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's not a horrible taste. Gotcha. Oh man, that's that's unfortunate. But I'll survive. I'll survive. I didn't eat grits with dirt in it. I can. I'll live. Oh. Yeah. How about yours, man? <laughs> Uh, mine is burning way faster than I expected. It's, I guess the cigar is hot too, and it's like I want to be here. So I mean, I, I usually ain't this far. It's yeah. quick. I mean, the whiskey from the Infinity Bottle is good. It's cold, so that's good. Chasing it with water because it's hot still. So you know, it is what it is. But uh, yeah, it's it's going together well though. I mean, can't can't say it's a bad cigar at all. I'm thoroughly enjoying the cigar. All right, guys. Um, so being that I'm in the military, man, I'm sure all my uh, military people that watch this, or hell, not even military, just civilians, man, everybody has dealt with their fair share of, you know, bad leadership. You got um, motherfuckers that care, you put their own career before their subordinates. Mm -hmm. You got what? What do they call like gatekeepers or some shit like that mm -hmm. on information? You got people that uh, uh, you know, talk bad about their employees behind their employees' back and then smile in their face and. All this other shit don't give them no recommend no the the what's the word I'm looking for? They recognition. don't give yeah they don't give them the recognition and the kudos and shit that they obviously mm -hmm. fucking deserve, man. There was a um um there was a ceremony at work. Me part this is for me personally. There was a ceremony at work. It doesn't bother me because I don't care for pats on the back. But I was like, God damn, for real. They gave props mm -hmm. to everybody that helped with the uh, inventory that we did recently. Every full time person in my section got acknowledged except for me. And I was like, mm -hmm. wow, y'all motherfuckers wouldn't have did shit if I ain't had a goddamn equipment. But you know, it is what it is. That's cool, man. Mm -hmm. So it made me think about this whole bad leadership thing. I was talking to another senior NCO of mine, and you know, he actually goes around and you know, teaches companies how to be leaders and stuff on his civilian capacity. Mm -hmm. I wish I had his card. I do got it. I'll show up for the episode. So, but, but um, what do you think, man, about bad leadership, being a leader yourself? Oh, man, it's hard, man. I mean, and it's one of those things where usually a bad leader is a bad leader from what I've seen, either from a fear, an ignorant stance, or they're just an asshole. I mean, it's so one thing, I mean, like some leaders, especially like on my side of the engineering side, a lot of things what you see is people afraid to show that they don't know because mm -hmm. your yeah. knowledge base is, you know, that they kind of pride themselves on their knowledge base. And for me as a leader, I know a lot of shit. I know, but I'm not afraid to be like, I don't know. Let me see what I can find out for you and not make that shit up. And so that's where you get those people that want to, like you were saying, kind of gatekeep information where they don't want you to know more than, you know, than, than them because they don't want to feel like they're inferior. I mean, there are times where there's information that they don't necessarily need to know because you want to think about like morale and shit like that. But, you know, any information that can make their job easier, make their job better, you should be providing that information. And a lot of times when you have a bad leader, it does exactly the opposite of what that leadership style is trying to accomplish. So like somebody who's scared of their team fucking up. So they micromanage. You get people like how many times have you ever heard? I fucking hate a micromanager. You know, you hate that. I mean, it's one thing to hold your people accountable, but to watch them do every single thing, people hate that. People yeah, hate that. with a passion. Mm -hmm. 
Myself included. I can't stand that shit. Yeah. I know. And and so I mean, there's different like things like I was saying. So like gatekeeping their information. When they find out like information has been held from them, you you come down a peg in their eyes. Like, why are you holding out on me? Why you ain't trying to help me out? Or those that like you know try to hog all the credit for themselves. Like I had a supervisor, a uh, couple couple leaders, two three up the chain. That every idea that was good was his idea, and like it got to the point where I would use that against him. So anytime there was an initiative that I wanted to get accomplished, I framed it as it was his idea, and I got so much shit done. And it, it takes a lot of extra effort because what that leader is supposed to be doing is knocking down doors. So you can do that to build that bench up and to, you know, help bring everybody up. So if your team is performing on all cylinders, it makes you look better. So there's nothing that you can do, you know, by robbing your team of that success that can be achieved greater by trying to support that team. You know what I mean? And then sometimes you got those people who are like leaders that don't want to be leaders uh-huh. and they kind of force in the position. So you get those kind of like, man, I don't give a fuck. I'm just here so I don't get fined. And those are kind of the worst kind because you can't get no support out of them. They ain't trying to do nothing. And it makes your job so much harder, especially when you need them to try to kick down doors, uh, you know, damage cover or, you know, top cover. What's the word I want? Damage control is the word I'm looking for. You know, run damage control because, you know, you're going to fuck up sometimes. And you don't want the supervisor or that leader to support you, take up for you, and not throw you under the bus like, "Mm, they fucked up. Sorry. And, you know, that that work again, everything that they do as a bad leader, you may be all right for a little while. Again, like we talked about in the last topic, your short sightedness versus your looking for the future long term. I mean, because if you are a good leader, you have people wanting to work for you versus yeah. people are like because word travels fast, regardless of what industry you're in. You're like, oh, that's an asshole. You don't want to work for them. And, you know, there's places where I could have worked where people are like, yeah, don't go there. That ain't what you want. And I mean, they may be telling the truth. They may not be. I mean, but again, sometimes you're like, do I even take the chance if I got a good thing where I'm at? Yeah. And, and you know, you just think about all the good employees you could have been having to make your shit better that you fucked up by being a bad leader. So I think that's all I got for right now. What do you think? And especially, I'm mean, interested to hear from a military perspective. Bad leadership could kill a squad, man. No, <laughs> I mean... I can't put it no no simpler. I mean, than wow. That, man. I mean, wow. From a military perspective, bro, I've had great leadership. I've had poor leadership. You know what I'm saying? When when you have that bad leadership, and we go and we were to go to combat, like man, fuck you, go over that hill and fight them motherfuckers. We'll watch you get shot and giggle, bitch, and then keep them motherfucking <laughs> pushing. <laughs> and then you know Damn. you got those good leaders, like hell yeah, we shoulder to shoulder with you, big son. We got you. And, you know, mm-hmm. seeing that, and when I got into the position to actually lead, I knew what kind of leader I was going to, you know, I was going to mm-hmm. be, you know, fighting for my right. soldiers when they're right, cussing their ass out when they're wrong, um, mm-hmm. you know, teaching them shit that I could teach them, and actually learning from them and making sure mm-hmm. they excel. Hell, uh, last month, mm-hmm. one of my soldiers got promoted to sergeant. He mm-hmm. He's now my fucking equal now. And, uh, you know, a lot of leaders are hate on some shit like that. They, they, yes, you are so right. You're so right. But I was fucking proud. I was happy as fuck. He was still calling me sergeant and shit. And I'm like, nah, man, no, nah, man. You better call me Kevin or something around here, man. No sergeant <laughs> no more. What the fuck? He, he always like, will. I mean, that's that respect. Yeah, he was like, no, nah, it don't feel right, big son. <laughs> it, don't, it don't feel right. And that that's the kind of leader I've always been with my soldiers. My soldiers from my last unit would still call me, hey, Sergeant Fowler, you coming back? Because this and this and this and this. <laughs> you know, and it wasn't me. I don't cater to my fucking soldiers at all. Mm-hmm. It was more of I look out for you. If you're right, you're right. If you're wrong, you're wrong. If you that's, fucked up, I'm going to cut you out for fucking up. That's, that's just the, the, the atmosphere that we're in. I'm going to cut you out for fucking up, but we're going to mm-hmm. keep pushing. I'm going to show you how to tell you how you fucked up after I cut you out. And, you know, I do little, you know, little morale boosters. Like, I remember one time we was in the field, and we had to turn these trucks in. And, you know, my soldiers going going in, man. That was, like, probably the worst field mission we fucking had, man. The shit sucked. Morale was fucking low. That same fucking day, I pulled a 24-hour shift. I had a truck Ooh. that went down at, like, 4 in the morning. Then we had another formation at, like, 5. And then I had to wake up again at, like, 7. So I laid down. By the time I laid down, took my boots off, boom, my phone was ringing. It was time to get back up. So I pulled a whole 24-hour shift. And I still had to take care of my soldiers. And they was like, man, this shit sucks. 
I want to get out the army. They was doing all this. And I did one thing, bro, one simple thing. I grabbed a couple of other NCOs and we bought them pizza. We we pulled up with pizza. They ran to the motherfucking pizza. They was eating the shit all sorry, fabulous and shit. And they called me when I get here. Hey man, we out here in the field, man. No pizza, nothing, bitch. So I don't know what the fuck you want me to tell you. But <laughs> But you do have, you know, the the people that's above me that should be, you know, God mean that there's a few that are, there's a few that mm-hmm. aren't. I'm not gonna put nobody on <clears throat> on blast, but it's to say, sure. it, how, how do you expect somebody to work for you and things to work like a, a fine tuned fucking machine if you're mm-hmm. leaving? Because they don't want to motherfucking do it. My motor pool runs fucking great because when my soldiers is there, they want to do the shit. They be like, oh, mm-hmm. God damn, that's going to suck. So I'm fouled, but all right, I got you, I got you. Because that's what mm-hmm. kind of leader I am. You look out for your people, your people look out for you. And that's what... That, is. yeah. That's and I, I really feel like you can be... Some people say you can't learn to be a leader. You're either born a leader or you're not, and I disagree. I think you can learn to be yeah. a leader from shitty leadership, actually. So mm-hmm. I actually praise bad leaders out there because y'all end up making good leaders because they don't want to be the type of fucking leader that... um that you are, but mm-hmm. it can definitely affect a group. It could definitely affect a unit. It could mm-hmm. definitely affect a business when you're you're a bad leader. You're a toxic leader. You're shitting on your your, your people. You're um, mm-hmm. not paying them on time. You're saying, "Hey, I'm gonna do this and never fucking follow through." Um, mm-hmm. You you talking to them sideways? I didn't heard motherfuckers talk to like we all grown in this organization. Who the fuck is you talking to? Type shit. Like, I didn't mm-hmm. have my soldiers like, hey, son, I don't know who he talking to, but, but I'll just be like, you know, chill, 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 because, you know, they would have, like, for no reason, uh, soldier called me the other day, so they was on a mission, somebody said, um, hey, come do this. He asked the question, do I need to take this or not take this to the person he was talking to? Mm-hmm. Uh, our leader in the back screams out, just fucking grab it and fucking move out, stop asking all these fucking questions. I'm like, God damn. I was like, hey man, to be honest with you, we're gonna take the stripes off for a minute. You don't let nobody fucking talk to you like that. You ain't gotta cuss mm-hmm. them out, but you can be tactful about the shit. But let these motherfuckers know you a man first. And you know, mm-hmm. that, that's something that's about bad leadership, knowing how to talk to your people. Yeah, I done cussed my people out several times. I mean, I go back and apologize because they they did something like really, really stupid, <laughs> which mm-hmm. would cause me I don't have the the longest temper, I guess. I got a really fucking short fuse. Mm-hmm. So I just pop and I make them understand that i just fucking pop but you have to as a leader you have to put those emotions to the fucking side and if your person i was gonna say soldier if you're insubordinate if you're 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 insubordinate if your person beneath you is fucking up you know what i'm saying figure Mm -hmm. out what's wrong teach them yeah you know what i'm saying you got to know your people inside and out person you ain't got to be at their fucking house every fucking weekend fucking partying Mm -hmm. but you should at least know right the people that are under you like i know when something's fucking wrong immediately i had mm-hmm. last last story and i'm done um last yeah. last drill so a uh, young private and i saw him at the smoking area and you know he was crying man he was upset so i'm like mm-hmm. hey man what's going on man you good so we just started talking he was like you know they don't do this they don't listen to this i failed uh height and weight or some shit like that and you know they're just on me on how i need to do better and i need to do this and i need to do that and i need to do this and you know, we just sit there and, and I talked to him like, "Hey, man. Um, other than that, like, what's really going on?" So he was, you know, he started breaking down what's going on, this, that, and he came up to me, um, this past drill and was like, "Hey, sorry, pal, I appreciate it. Guess what? I passed height and weight. Me and my girlfriend are doing good. I'm finna find a new place." And that was just me talking to this one soldier one time, actually being a mm-hmm. fucking leader, you know, giving him my number, saying, "If you got a problem, call me." And I do that with my mm-hmm. soldiers. Too. Y'all call me any fucking time. Y'all need some. Anytime my soldiers call, I answer the fucking phone, regardless of how stupid it is. <laughs> sometimes it be stupid, mm-hmm. but bad leadership would definitely make you hate the job. Mm-hmm. Like you could have yeah. a dream, your dream job, your dream job, and because mm-hmm. the person over you is so fucking shitty, you would fucking hate it. You wouldn't even want to do that fucking job no way. You would want to leave as quick as possible because of that leadership and. The, finally, the last thing I got on that shit is don't let bad leadership dictate your career path, where the fuck you want to go mm-hmm. in a particular organization. If you're in an organization and you love what you're doing, all that type of shit, just remember that leadership is going to fucking change eventually. The motherfuckers is not fucking permanent. So keep doing yeah. what you're doing. Don't let nobody run you off from what you really want. So a couple things based on what you said um, about leaders being born versus taught. Um, you can be 
well, let's see, you cannot be a leader by birth and become one through training. Yep. You can also be a leader, but be a terrible leader if you don't learn. I mean, because there's always schools of thought, there's things to do, there's tips, there's techniques that you may never consider that you have to learn to be an effective leader. I mean, even like arts of communication, emotional intelligence. I mean, there's all kinds of things like that that you just yeah. got to learn that will make you a better leader. It's one thing to lead people, but it's another thing to lead people well. And that's where that learning comes in. And I will say for all my leaders out there and my potential leaders out there, being a leader is hard. Uh, I mean, just like like what you were saying, um, not only do you you know have to deal with like a lot of the, the work shit, day-to-day shit, when they trust you as an effective leader, you start to hear you know, about their successes and their failures. I yep. mean, they're not just talking work, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And you get to hear, you know, you hear like, you know, when they're scared or anxious or have a procedure coming up or lose yep. a family member or, you know, work is stressing them out or whatever the case may be. Because, like, I know I had a guy once who had a lot of shit going on. And, like, my heart definitely went out to this dude. And work was, like, demanding and demanded and demanded and so you know as as a bad leader who's focused on the numbers and the metrics and whatever i come like yo you here to do a job just do your job you know yeah. what i mean but taking the time out like hey man i'm here to make sure you good make sure you okay within reason of course i mean you yeah. can't come to work for the next six years and just fuck around but you know i i can give you a little bit of grace in order to kind of get your bearings, not make it. Because I remember when I first moved to the, to the office in Texas, um, shortly thereafter, there was a guy, and I'll never forget it. He um, took himself out. And you never really know why, but um, a lot of people suspect. I mean, he had some hard days at work because of his leadership. I don't know if that was directly the cause, but I'm sure it impacted. I mean, he was... Uh, not young, young, but he was about, I mean, in our 20s, because he's about, he about my age at the time. So 20s, young father, um, father of, I think, three at the time. And real nice guy. And you just never know what somebody's going through. And yeah. I think that leader, you know, if you were that compassionate leader, you could potentially save that person's life, and you don't even know it. Yeah, man, those motherfuckers that just be like strictly about the matrix and the numbers and mission first and all this other shit, man. Mm-hmm. I really, really can't stand that fucking type of fucking leadership. Mm-hmm. That's the same concept of what that soldier I was talking about. Because that's yeah. all they cared about is they they got cussed out by first sergeant or whoever. So mm-hmm. they cussed this soldier out, not knowing what the fuck this man got going on. And yeah. It's it's like you said, and then for leaders, man. Um, you know, y'all ain't gotta take. We ain't gotta take it on all ourselves. You ain't gotta take it on mm-hmm. all yourself. Your your subordinates are there to do their job, yeah. But if mm-hmm. you stop gatekeeping, let them fucking help you and make the mm-hmm. entire mission or organization or project or whatever you're working on be a complete fucking success. And last, yeah. thing, give these people the, the fucking credit they that they fucking deserve. Oh, yeah, got their bust in the ass. That shit goes a fucking long way. Even if it's something as simple as a fucking pizza party, to say, "Hey man, you guys did a so this damn job." I laugh, but there's jokes on the internet that yeah. be like, um, "You know, I, I work double shifts, and what does management do to thank me with a pizza party when I'm asking for a raise?" And yeah. I just thought that was kind of funny. So, and, um, and, and and you are like, "Man, what the fuck, pizza again?" Right. It's not one of the things right. you do all the fucking time. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But you know, show the appreciation for your people. Um, let them learn from you and honestly learn from them. Like, especially mm-hmm. in the military, bro. We're we're older soldiers now. We got these kids that know shit about, you know, the what's going on now better than fucking we do. They understand how to work shit better than we do. Prime example, we're using um group me now. I feel mm-hmm. old as fuck because I didn't know how to fucking use group me, bro. I had a soldier mm-hmm. actually sit down and show me how to fucking use group me, man. Something just as simple as that. Tell them mm-hmm. that you appreciate what they fucking do, man. You know, and Ask them about their families. You know, yeah. how, how's the baby? You just had a new baby. How's the baby doing? How's your wife doing? You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Little shit like that really goes a long motherfucking way. So what do you guys think? What kind of leaders have you had? What's what? Tell us what the best leadership that you can think of and tell us a, a, a shitty leader that you had. We'd love to hear about that. Yeah, hell yeah, man. We'll we'll do another 
comment section with this one in particular, man, because I think mm. that would be really fucking good, man. Really good. And also, leaders, 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 do not fucking baby your goddamn people, man. Mm-hmm. Don't fucking baby them. Yeah, empower them to do the job and do the job well. Exactly. It's, you're not their friend. You're there to do the job. That's bad mm-hmm. leadership, too. All right, everybody. I'm sure you've seen it everywhere. I'm sure if you don't know, you should know um, that right now we're celebrating the 50th anniversary of hip hop. Um, there's different controversies about is it really the 50th anniversary? We, but for, for the sakes of it, let's say it is. Um, and because of it, I almost bought a bottle of Hennessy um, last week because right. it was commemorating the, uh, I know, it was commemorating the, uh, <laughs> 50th anniversary. It had like Nas and other rappers and shit on there. Mm-hmm. I'll put a picture right there of it if I still got the picture. But um, I, I picked it up and I was like, this is Hennessy. I still morally came by it even though it's got rappers on there. So with that, man, I thought I would I thought we'd have a discussion on who are your top five rappers of all time? Alive oh. or dead, don't matter. <laughs> top five. Or you want 10? How many you need? I, I I can do five. Five is good. I can do a couple honorable mentions, man. Um, I'm gonna start off now. He he's not like a uh, Billboard, seen him on BT, uh, none of that shit. But he's the reason when I was rapping, I really started rapping like when I was like ten, nine, some shit like mm-hmm. that. Um, our fucking uncle, man, Ahmad, man. He he's yeah, man. One first, man. He he got me into fucking rapping, man. That motherfucker was goddamn lethal i remember one fucking uh one bar he had something about um coming your girl mouth so she could see what kind of father i am or some shit like that he said oh yeah i, I remember this yes I, god damn but yeah hell yeah man i fucking uncle man he used to go by uh fayard but it's just a mod now man so definitely yeah. our uncle is, is the first mm-hmm. one I'm, I'm gonna have to mention um mm-hmm. the second one Cliche as it may be, is you know Biggie. I was a real big Biggie fan. Um, like an uh, ignorant child, by the way, when I was younger. When Tupac died, I was kind of like, yes, you know what I'm saying. I was that much of a fucking Biggie fan. I was a kid. I ain't know no better. And I know people are like, damn, he was listening to Biggie. Oh. He was like seven. You goddamn right. It's his yeah, fault. No choice. It's his fault. It's his yeah, fault. No choice. <laughs> but yeah, definitely Biggie, man. Um. Eminem's another one. Once again, you mm-hmm. started with Eminem. You got M- the Slim Shady LP or whatever. You brought the mm-hmm. first Eminem CD in the fucking house. And I was like, hell yeah. And then, you know, it just carried on. I always listen to Eminem. I stopped listening to, I haven't listened to his newer albums in the past coming years because he was kind of, I'm going back. But I've always been an Eminem fan. Um, yeah. I think the last one I listened to was Kamikaze. What's that? Number three. Um, number four. Um, Lil Wayne, man. I'm a big Lil Wayne fan, too. Lyrically, that motherfucker is a monster. Metaphorical fucking lyrics mm-hmm. and shit is a goddamn monster. Like, a monster. Like, literally, I mm-hmm. really feel like he's one of the best rappers alive, for real. Because he's, like, mm-hmm. goaded with his fucking bars and shit and how he ties that shit together. And you're like, god damn. Latex? Late sex? Latex? What the fuck? Damn! Yeah, he told the shit, man. Hell yeah, man. Um, and lastly, he's been out for a minute. He has been out for a minute, but I'm gonna go with Kendrick Lamar for my last one in my top five. Mm-hmm. I've I've always been a big Kendrick Lamar fan. Also, like lyrically, he was a fucking genius. Um, and he just he was just different with his shit. Like it, he had a good mm-hmm. flow. Um, you know what I'm saying? He tied his words together great, but it was different. Like sometimes it was deeper. Mm-hmm. Sometimes it was just that base nigga shit, for lack of a better term. But um, even though on that, it's still lit. Like when you go back and listen to him, it's still even deep. that you know, yeah, even still, yeah, it's still fucking deep, man. And um, so that's my top five. A couple of uh, honorable mentions is um, um, Jordan Lucas, man. Jordan Lucas is fucking cold. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you put like, me on him. Yeah, Jordan Lucas is cold. Um, what's his name? Dak. Dak is is fucking cold too. If you actually listen to what he's saying, he he had that mm-hmm. um song on social media that was going crazy and everybody was doing little uh duets and shit the I get mm-hmm. wasted when I'm in it, when it's in it, my love and I, I get wasted you know but he talks about real issues like mm-hmm. um he got another song about being a man and things a man go through and 
alcoholism and just lyrically he's cold and he can like switch it. He can go fast as fuck, like Twister. He can slow that bitch all the way down on some chop the screw type shit. If you haven't heard Dak, bro, I suggest you look up Dak. Now I, I'm pretty sure yeah. you look up. Yeah, I heard him, but yeah, I'll check him out. And lastly, I'm gonna go with Twister now that I mentioned his name as my honorable mention, man, because I've always been a fan of fast rappers, bone thugs, crucial conflict, mm. uh fucking do or die. Twister, I mean, if you rap fucking fast, man, I was all for it. And Twister, my favorite album had to be his Kamikaze album. That shit was mm. fucking uh, an amazing fucking body of work, man. And um, mm. yeah, I think that's my top five, man. Music is my shit, man. I love music. Um, mm. Like I said, Mark started started me with it when I used to rap, guys. And my first, my very first rap ever. <laughs> on air guys it was my name is crazy k and i came to say, I came oh, to say oh. <laughs> and it motivated me man but i progressed and i i can actually still do it i'm not gonna do it here but i still got fucking bars mm. when i want to have fucking bars um mm. so how about you bro what's your top five? Oh man you put our uncle in there and i'm rethinking my numbers now but um only reason i didn't put him in there it's just because I wanted I, I like like for these lists I like to give myself constraints. Mm. And so I stuck to like rappers that are like known because there's a couple other indie rappers and shit that I'm like, yo, if only they got to play, they would be amazing. But um over through the years. So um I too, Biggie. I mean, that's funny. We grew up together, so it had to be Biggie. Um, but what is one of my favorite Biggie songs mm-hmm. and warning? Uh, it's probably my two favorite Biggie songs right there. I met the main uh, verse only... on the web. Was fucking, I was rapping mm-hmm. this shit yesterday, matter of fact. Yes, yeah, so, sir. Man, you're right, you're I'll be damned if it ain't some shit. <laughs> yeah, man. So, only thing is, you know, I wish he was alive longer to, mm. oh, man, to, to just keep going. Because, man, he had, like, metaphors. He could tell stories. Oh, I mean, yeah. like, so crazy like warning is like a master class in storytelling because the video is nothing but the song it's amazing um so biggie definitely and I, i'm in no order so i'm just gonna keep going so you mentioned biggie i said the what is my favorite biggie song one of my favorite biggie songs so it's also one of my favorite songs because my other favorite rappers on there method man m-e-t-h-o-d so method man has been probably one of my favorite rappers since to cal at mm. dad's house, man. That shit. We when I heard rocking, what? what? When when I heard that fucking CD, man, that shit blew my mind. I was like, holy shit. Wow. So favorite song been a man. Huh? Favorite, favorite song, song on that CD? Um shit. Um fuck it. I don't remember the name of it, but I think it was song number nine. I can't remember the name of it, but shit. I, I mean, Release Your Delph had to be the shit. Um, there, there's a video. There's a video of me listening to that song um, when Lamar was a baby. Kim, she's like, damn, sneaking around the corner with her phone, and she, I'm, I'm rapping the song, holding Lamar, dancing with Lamar, singing that shit. So put it in here, I, bro. I, if I can, if I can get her to find it, I, I might put it in there. But uh, favorite rapper. Um, now I'm gonna go to the south a little bit. Um, Ti is I don't care. I mean I don't like his music a little bit now as much, but Ti when he came out the gate with Beanie Man, who was my favorite reggae artist, I didn't count him on the list because that's reggae artist. I mean you could argue rap too, but I'm not for the sake of like I said constraints. But um, when I'm Serious came out, another song that I was like, like if it was ever one of them things where it was like sing this shit, are you going in the pool? I got him serious all day. <laughs> picture me unhappy with no cash and out of fashion, yeah. not flashing. I forgot shit, about picture me yeah, breathe on the mic now. Yeah, shit. So even Kim know that one. So uh, definitely had to go with Ti on there. Um, then I'm gonna have to go, and this was hard for me. And Charlemagne mentions it all the time on the Breakfast Club. And I, I'm cheating because I can't pick one. But I gotta say, Outcast. Mm. Um, and because it's like I like them both equally for different reasons. Yeah. And so I can't ever just pick one. But lyrically, who's better? It depends on what you want. Like hard hitting, just straight lyrics. 
I mean, I'm gonna like like punch you in the face lyrics. I'm gonna go with uh, Big Boy. But then when you talk about like the create the creativity of stringing shit together, Andre. And that's what I'm saying. Like they're so different, but they go together so well. I mean, well they emer- they grew so different, but it still fits together so well. Mm-hmm. I mean, like I've been Outcast fans since Players Ball. Yeah, yeah. If you put me on I'll, Outcast too, yeah. I'll still listen to Players Ball to this day. Side B um, on the tape back then. <laughs> All the plays play came from far wide. You know, that's shit. Um, so and then the next one I'm gonna have to go with um because I like storytellers and I like stuff like that. So I'm gonna have to go with Nas. And and what's cool with Nas is like I thought about putting Buster Rhymes on the list, but I think I like Nas a little bit more. Um, because Nas, you can just like chill and just drive to Nas, um, listen to that shit. Like kind of like I feel like Nas for like our generation is what Kendrick Lamar is like now. Yeah, you know I mean? like, yeah. That's that's the that's, lyrics are as deep or as shallow as you want to take them. Mm-hmm. Like I mean, like a couple songs where he raps a song from like a it's a story, but he does it from the night and goes all the way back. I think the rewind or something like that, where it's like he does the whole day in reverse. Shit is amazing. He um the song when he raps from the perspective of a gun. Yeah, like there's just so 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 many like the concept for me, and even like now, I mean Nas just have like like a sec like I say Nas and Busta Rhymes right now are like having that second resurgence, and I mean that's just amazing. Yeah, and Nas and did that uh that little Christmas verse boy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, clips four niggas pro one good drives. I was like, oh my right, (laughs) right, (laughs) right. Hey, hell yeah. I'm sorry to interrupt, bro. I love music. You man. good, man. You good, man. So, I mean, I only had to pick five. So, those are my five. I mean, if I had to go honorable mentions, right? I mean, depending on which day and depending on what I'm listening to, Lil Wayne, like I almost put Lil Wayne on the list, but I had to put Nas. But Lil Wayne is cold, man. Lil Wayne has always been amazing, man. Like, and as he got older, he got better. I mean, I hope he comes out with some music soon at some point. He said he'd be in the studio working still, so let's hope Shit. that happens. He's got a fucking Pixar movie coming out next year. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that, that's the hustle now. I mean, I want to watch it. I want to watch it. Everybody want to get to that Snoop Dogg life where they say Snoop Law, Snoop, Snoop has completed life and he's yeah. just living the side quest now. So, facts. <laughs> <laughs> so he, he doing like everything. So, I mean, I think that's my list. Um, Kendrick Lamar, I like. Um, I can never say his last name, but uh, Tobe, um, you know what I'm talking about. I know you're talking King, about. Oh, uh, shit. Yeah, I knew yes. how, I, I, it was right here, too. I knew how to say his last name for a second. But, yeah, hey, that yeah. motherfucker actually really cold, man. Did you hear the song mm-hmm. with him, um, him and Paul Wall? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I was like, damn, that shit yeah. went really good. Yeah, that. He got a song with CeeLo. Uh, he got a song with his wife. He got a few songs with his wife. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, shout out to that. Um, he talks about his wife and making babies all the time, so that should be oh, cracking. Yeah. Ain't none at all. So, I mean, I guess that's my list, man. Um, while we done our top list, anybody else you'd add that not necessarily in the top list, but good? Um, first, I would say DMX, not yeah. just because he yeah. passed away, but we've always been DMX fans, man. We even watched his movies and everything, like, we've always been. Did, he had a different type of uh, cadence to his 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 raps, but he was a storyteller too, man. That that yeah. Damien shit was like probably one of my mm-hmm. favorite songs, man. That that was like one of my favorites, man. yeah. And Dad yeah. loved the fuck out of DMX too. Um, mm-hmm. Old Kanye, old Kanye, D- yeah, old Kanye. Yeah, was fine. DMX had everybody in high school barking and shit. You know, <laughs> <laughs> whatever that was, my <laughs> life. You had chicks in the just oh you mm-hmm. said my name <laughs> right <laughs> hell yeah and, and then dudes be like yep I know one of those one of yep, those one yep, of those yep, yep shit I just sat with you and um our other brother that's not blood I ain't gonna mention his name on here to protect the guilty but he mm-hmm. used to, <laughs> I used to sit around with y'all ass doing that shit yep, but no honorable true, mentions man. but I would say. To you, bro, you put me on like just about everybody I listen to, man. Music wise, from listening to shit we recorded on blank cassette tapes and writing the fucking lyrics yes, down, sir. Pad, yes, man. sir. 
all fucking you, bro. My music would not be where it is if mm. I wasn't fucking so, uh, you know what I'm saying, impressed by my big brother, I guess you could say. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> How about you, man? You got anybody else you mentioned, man, before we get up out of here? Um, I mean, not really a couple that I go rapid fire, not necessarily because they lyricists or anything like that, but just because influential to us growing up. I'd say like anybody from the South, um, A Ball, MJG, Lil John, and not that whole clip, um, fucking uh, UGK, Pastor Troy. I mean, any any of that growing up was just that was like <laughs> part of the childhood. Like, you know, uh, there was a meme with a chair where somebody played drama. Or mm-hmm. a miracle. Mm-hmm. No, it was drama. It was drama. Yeah. Yep. 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 <laughs> so I was like, wow. <laughs> I was like, wow. wow. Have you ready to fight? What? Yeah, Ooh. man. And even though man, Miracle so Miracle is a homegrown hero, man. Like, I think you went to school mm-hmm. with his sister. I went to school with yeah, his Homegrown, yeah. man. Um, yeah. One more. Jeezy. I can't forget about motherfucking Jeezy, man. Jeezy was real mm-hmm. fucking influential. Um, and to mm-hmm. see where he is now, he just dropped a book and all this other mm-hmm. shit, man. He's doing some like real big shit, and he's married to to that fine ass fucking Asian woman he's married to. And mm-hmm. his daddy put me in school suspension of Glen Hills High School. <laughs> right, that's the funny <laughs> shit. Right. <laughs> so you know what I'm saying? Couldn't forget about Jeezy, but. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, and I guess. Well, we didn't put him on here. I mean, I like Jay Z. I mean, some people be like he's overrated, but Ooh. I've always been a Jay Z fan. So I call him Jay Z. Yeah, Jay Z, Busta Rhymes. Um, Busta. I mean, what what I like about Busta Rhymes, man, is just I mean from leaders of the new school. Damn, I'm like, mm. I mean, scenario, scenario. His verse in scenario. I mean, hell, all the scenarios mm. still goes hard, but his verse in that. I mean, we was kids. I mean, to he even putting out shit now. So man, I think what uh, shit I forgot about that was down there yeah. deep. Boy, shit. Oh man, yeah. So you got any new definitely. school rappers you like other than Toby? New school rappers that I like. I mean, it's rough. I be trying, but I don't listen to a lot of new school rappers now. I mean, I I like Lil Baby a little bit. Um I mean, I don't know if you want to call him new school, but J. Cole. Yeah, he's kind of new. He's newer for us. I mean, compared to he's our like list. Lamar era. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, other than that, I mean, I be trying. <laughs> I mean, again, there's a couple like, you know, in, indie rappers or whatever, or, you know, non mainstream. I can never remember them brother's name that be uh, freestyling like a podcast at the table. Uh, Coast Contra. Yeah, yeah, they they, they cold. Pretty, they, they, pre- cold. They, they pretty cold, man. I like them. Um, <laughs> Keep it moving, man. That motherfucker. I was yeah, like, that, that, damn. yeah, yeah. I mean, and then you got like bilingual rapping. You had a story in there. I mean, yeah. that hits like all the things you like in hip hop, man. That shit was great. That was um, this Asian chick that was on TikTok like last year. Damn, I oh, mm-hmm. but another honorable. Go ahead. She would go in English and she's spitting, and then she'll flip that bitch in the motherfucking Mandarin. And I'm like, oh my god! Mm-hmm. Like, speaking of a uh, bilingual, you ever heard of Snow the product? Yeah, yeah. She's straight. Hell yeah! We're gonna do female rappers on the next one. Bet. So you guys, let us know your top five, top ten, top one, top two, whatever it is. Definitely want to hear it. Um, oh, yeah. Did we miss anybody? Do you disagree with us on anybody? Don't really care, but you know, do you disagree? Um, they asked Method Man who his top five was, and he said, "Inspect the deck, inspect the deck, inspect the deck." Yeah, I remember that. <laughs> that shit was kind of. Method Deck was cold too, though. Yeah. So was ODB. Mm-hmm. Like motherfuckers think, like, oh, they're the best. The, the radio shit he did compared to when he's actually like rapping, rapping, like. Mm-hmm. Oh, he different. was cold as fuck. Man. Yeah, 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 different fucking monster. The baby too. When the baby's actually fucking rap, not doing that radio shit like that. So, the baby can actually fucking I, rap. And yeah. I was gonna say him as a new school, but 
he kind of fell off after his uh, getting canceled. And so I didn't put him on as an honorable mention. But I did because I went consciously a while back trying to find like new school rappers that I might like. And yeah, he, he's not bad. Yeah. And just because my kids watch Lil Dirt over NBA Young Boy. Well, you like Twenty One Savage? No. <laughs> no. So I like now, Drake. Old Drake. I don't. I like old Drake. I like make four Drake songs, and but not Drake as a whole. Um, I was gonna say Nas and Twenty One Savage have a, a a song on the new album. That's pretty good. That sounds interesting. Twenty One is uh, what? Uh, he's kind of like the walk of us, uh, walk of flock of up north type rapper. I know he's. British and mm. represent Tay from the South and all this other shit, but he just he reminds me of Walker Flock, and I respect Walker Flock because he even said, "Hey man, I can't rap." Yeah, as long as he <laughs> having fun. If a nigga jump stupid, then there's two things: hands and feet. I was like, what? "Hell yeah, it's been two things: hands and feet." And then while we talking about rap, man, I got a shirt on right now. Shout out to my boy Coco, man. Yeah, I'll, I'll go ahead and check out my boy Coco on Coco Music. Yeah, check them out. You gotta get them up here one day too. We do, man. We do. You gotta set that shit up anytime, man. All right, yes, sir, yes, sir. As you can see, my hands is empty, but Big Bros isn't, man. So how's your drink? Holding on barely. (laughs) How's your smoke? (laughs) Uh, The cigar was actually good, man. I don't think I think this is my first cigar from them. I'm gonna have to check BL Luxuries and get a few more. See what else they got. Yeah, this was a good cigar. Um, I did enjoy it. Definitely enjoyed the cigar. Um, Yeah, that one I smoked on the porch. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think you did. I think you sent it to me in a picture. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, this cigar, Infinity Bottle, is the Infinity Bottle. It, it's a good round of the Infinity Bottle. Um, I need to buy some more whiskeys because the Infinity Bottle. Let me see if I can show it. It's getting a, getting a little low. Mm. So I'm gonna have to fix that. But um, mm. yeah, not too bad. Not too bad. And the Infinity Bottle goes well with anything. So got that. Uh, so what about you, man? Um. Cigar was separately, cigar was good, vodka hit great, like always. But together, that just wasn't the right pairing. Everything's not going to pair well yeah. with yeah. a cigar, and that's that's actually my first time that that's happened, and I really don't like it in my soul. But um, it's a learning experience, though. Yeah, it's good. I did, it's I did good. not like that. The taste was fucking disgusting. But everything mm-hmm. don't go with vodka. But the cigar separately, it was a good cigar, man. They say a full body, and I feel it in my full fucking body right now. My eyes lazy as hell, man. I got that. Well, fuck you, damn punk eye over here. You know what I'm saying? Because D boy ain't taking his jury. Um, and um, uh, <laughs> I shoot, you shoot, we shoot. Goddamn right, MLB Nard, man. I'll go check out brother in law, man. But um, yeah, man, it is what it is. Wasn't a good parent, <laughs> but it worked for what I needed to do today. Mm-hmm. Like I said, mm-hmm. I'm celebrating. Give me so about great. Foul language, and y'all gonna hear what I'm celebrating about because I'm being yes, cutting the fuck up. Y'all just wait. I mean, we can probably guess it based on how you're talking, but <laughs> all right, man. You got anything else for the people? Yeah, man. Y'all make sure y'all check out the Foul Language podcast, man. We on Spotify now, man. So if y'all riding and need a mm-hmm. podcast, listen to you want to laugh a little bit, yes, learn sir. a little bit, man. Y'all go ahead and check mm-hmm. us out on Spotify and yes, sir. You know, on other uh podcasts and services as well yes sir yes we are yes we are so with that um one thing here i'm gonna put some episodes here episode 100 check that out that was fun uh other episodes we got on here on the screen take care of yourselves take care of each other um smoke good cigars drink good drinks and we out hey